Hey, Cinnamon. Hey, I have no uh, screen video <laughs> to let me know we're on. <laughs> so I'm just waiting for my lower thirds to show up, just standing there looking goofy and zombied out. <laughs> Thank you for letting me know. Welcome to the craziest live stream ever. We hope we're going out. We've been waiting to catch a wave of good connection. Uh, for sure, this is going to be on the replay. So if you're brave enough to come in and hang out for the live, Thank you so much. If you're here on the replay, you probably are getting better connection. Um, hopefully, I will have a screen that lets me know what the heck is going on because usually we have that on. <laughs> it's been this crazy. Oh, there it is. I can see it now. You've been seeing it the whole time while I've been going <laughs> like this. Um, I saw everybody in the group. Thank you for being so patient about the beginning of this. It's been. It's been, this is this is the sippy sippy I'm on with this one today and and we just hope that this way we've caught it and your and your good intentions keep our because that's how internet works you have to intend it that's the real purpose for law of attraction is to keep the internet connected the rest of it's just surface stuff <laughs> <laughs> but but the uh, we got some pixels out today. I have some pixels out. They're they're going out. We think. Oh, are they currently going out? I think they think we're feeding and we're doing good. So. Oh, oh, oh I thought you were saying we were pixelating. No, no, I hope. No, not. like the movie. Okay, so we're good. All right, guess what we're gonna paint today? Let me show you. Usually I show you right right away. Oh wait, I can do. We're it too. painting my blue lion. Ooh. This came out of a daily painting that I did for a period of about three months, which was quite a journey. And there was a huge horde of artwork going around the house. I was trying to get out of a commercial mindset into more of a fine art mindset. And I'm like, what I've got to do is just exhaust myself so I could get out of my own way. And he was one of the beautiful pieces that came out of it. And I'm so glad to be sharing with you today how I did him. Um, I have one extra paint color, which is not yet in the description, but will be in the description for the replay. So you can ignore this is burnt sienna. So let's get to mm. the palette. We've got Burnt Sienna today, Cad Red Medium, and you can save money if you buy Hue. Cad Yellow Medium, again, save money if you buy Hue. Phthalo Blue, Dogzine Purple, Titanium White, and I have, and I actually like this, the Artist Law Fluid Paint as an alternative to say the Goldens, though, straight up, got a tube of this in white and it just came out like cottage cheese, so. Didn't love it, but it's not like it doesn't happen with all the paints. 16 by 20 canvas. I've got these awesome watercolor pencils that I picked up at Michael's for a few dollars. They're really cheap and they're nice to sketch in with because they'll paint away. And of course, sippy sippy. How are you guys mm, today? <laughs> we have a full house today. It's awesome. There's like so almost, you know, I think we get, uh, just, uh, we're too shy of 60 in the room and we just started. Wow. Wow. I know I saw my good friend Angela came today. Yeah, she's, she's in channel. And I know because she has been one of the brave, intrepid artist warriors who's gone out into the live stream, which I, I gotta, I gotta tell you, I think is super cool because, whoo, it's such an event to flip that computer switch over and go, yeah, you know how I'm gonna do this is live. <laughs> <laughs> so... High fives. <laughs> so, and of course, you guys all know Angela Anderson. Yeah, yeah got to. Um, we have some cool wishes today. Oh, yeah, we do. Kit. So, I know we have a wish for uh, Dees Charles. We have a wish for a positive outcome for Charles on an upcoming test. Mm. And just in general, I'd like to just send some health angels over to their house. Yeah? Yes. And then, um, what else have we got today, John? Uh, it's in the, I made sure I texted it to you. Oh, yeah. I was just, uh, just the, well, the, the community's I'm, got a bunch coming out here for us. Oh, they have a bunch. So, well, okay. So, we can start here. Uh, well, the wishes for the line here. We have Castile gets, uh, let's see here. I'm going to pull up. I've got the picture here. Oh, is this for Crystal? Yeah, we can do crystals if you'd like. All right. So, I just ran into, she shared, where did my pencil go? I just ran into Crystal. And Crystal shared a story with me. She's going through some really extreme health stuff. And 
um, through a series of events, just ended up on a really tight budget. Uh, Don and I can certainly understand how that goes. I imagine many of you can relate to how that goes. And she saw Cat Bat and she really wanted to paint it and she had no materials, no budget for it. So she went to her local dollar store and she got Q-tips, Angela will appreciate this, toothpicks and the little paint pots and she did Cat Bat. And it just totally touched my heart. It completely inspired me. We're gonna have a special to Crystal dedicated episode, which is where I'm gonna go to the dollar store and I'm gonna get art supplies and make some art with that. Yep, okay. Because we should all be able to do that and I think that is so courageous. So I'm gonna wish Crystal some good health and well-being in her life. Can I put up her cat bat? Yes, please put up her hat, cat bat, which was done with toothpicks Tooth and Q-tips. Toothpicks and, and Q-tips, look at that. Isn't that fantastic? I thought that was great. She's my, my hero this week. She's definitely, definitely my hero. So we've got a wish for her. And, oh, our own high, uh, do we do we have, is high jinx or do we already wish high jinx job from home? You gotta look in your messages. Oh, I'm gonna messages. scroll back over there, yeah. No, 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 it's in the text messages I mm -hmm. sent you to your phone. Um, I, well, we got we have to wish uh, for Flame. Who ha I'm gonna look that up. Oh, Flame time. Gremlin, yep. who is um, it's hard because Flame Gremlin has got virtual tickets for BlizzCon, so I'm really struggling to not have envy oh, about yeah. the BlizzCon. But what are we wishing for Flame Gremlin? I, I guess he's having some surgery, so we're gonna wish him best wishes. Yes, it's tomorrow, and uh, still BlizzCon tickets. Yeah, and <laughs> share with us how it is. And we had some wish for health and social security. Yeah, I definitely want that. My mom went through that run. And we had uh, a Celeste. Uh, we wanted to see, make sure that she gets the help she needs and a positive outcome. Uh, and have you found that text I sent I you? I am. I'm going through those right now. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, 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 Nicola and Katie get a bloom in business. All right, Nicola and Katie, that's right. So Celeste wanted to make sure that I sent out some love to Nicola and Katie. I really hope that we get a bloom in business. We're coming up to the holiday season, and I'm wishing abundance and well-being to your business. Mm -hmm. So I know this is kind of some law of attraction stuff. John and I were talking about that the other day because my mom and I have been long time, you know, the secret people but I just want to put this in the caveat like what I'm saying this is an intentional living intentionally positive living I don't actually think it'll stop the meteor from coming to earth I just think I'm gonna be the happiest person all the way up to that point mm hmm and I think it really does help to just choose to focus on the good because there are things you can't control but you can control how you interpret everything that's going on around you Got a one inch oh, we, filbert. We have a couple more wishes. Though. Oh, we have a couple we have, more wishes. We have a couple wishes. Which okay. A couple more. All right, couple more wishes. Crystal, we wish her health and well being. Yeah, well, I, pu I put Crystal's okay, health and well being in. Okay, and, and to uh, one of our community members, AG, she has a deep wound in her spirit, and we're going to sprinkle love and peace for her. Okay, so I'm going to wish a well being stream to AG. Oh, and. Flame is a girl, so I, I used a he earlier. I apologize. Yeah, I did, that's I, some I, that's some geek sexist stuff there, bitch. Just yeah, I I I did. I'm sorry. You know, I apologize. He does. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I so I think you know when John when John was dorking it up, there just were like three girls. <laughs> <laughs> And I think that's that's all of our I think that was all our wishes uh, that we have. Awesome. I think that's a really positive note to start on for Lion because I do think that that positivity and we're going to talk about this with Lion today is about that positivity mm -hmm. and how that holds our experience regar regardless of the things that we can't control. Like I can't control somebody cutting me off, but I do have a lot of control over how I feel when I get cut off. I'm going to put some water on my brush. Isn't that right, John? Oh, yeah. Control how we feel when we get cut off. <laughs> 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 Even in the school morning line. <laughs> All the time. Oh, he struggles with this one. So I pulled a little dogsy in purple into my blue. 
and I'm going to get a scotch, a smidge, a small amount of white. And it took us so long to get the broadcast going this morning. This may end up being... Oh, you know what I forgot to do? Can you have one more for Amy? I can, and I forgot to sketch in my... Which you've got to keep me on. I'm on. I've got to sketch it in. What would you like to wish for Amy? I, 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 someone said that I missed one. I missed a, a wish for Amy. So w just real quick, sketch in. All right, I'm going to sketch in while John's love working that out. Just put, put, put a wish, wish of love for, uh, for Amy because I can't see what... Uh, uh, Pain-free day. I think it is. Oh, and, yes. And and we'll... A pain-free day. This is a pain-free lion. So one of the things I want you to look at, we're going to be going diagonally across the canvas. And so you can make an egg shape if you need to anchor your space. Right? And you can kind of see him. And so that's generally what I do is I make a very light egg shape. And then in his face, I know I'm going to have a center line coming down his nose. And then I'm going to have eyes coming here and his nose coming here. It's really similar to what we do when we're doing faces, where we bisect the skull to where we know features are going to be sitting in the skull. So his brow is going to come down, arc down, and then we come up to a temple bone and then a lid here. And then he's got a little eyeball popping out and a little jawbone down here. And we've got this beautiful broad nose. And the nose is a little Roman. And come down to his little, which would not be cute if you actually were seeing him live, but his little smudgy, smudgy little kitty parts. <laughs> Making his little smile. We're gonna have a traceable. I like to, the jaw isn't too big and is a little flat as it comes down. And just look for that. Now, the nose, if you take a line down the center of the nose and bring it to where his little smudgy part meets, this is technical stuff, then that helps you get the perspective of your nose, which arcs up and comes down and curves in and meets where that lip goes up. Then this one does the same thing and meets the outer edge. So it's almost like a flying heart would be the best way I would describe doing a lion's nose as a flying heart. Why don't we see if we can get the close-up cam on that? Because that's a, it's, it's where you did pull it out a little bit. Like that? Zoom or out, out, out? Zoom out. This way. Oh, hold on a second. Let me go over and see if I can get that for you. You get this. What, what are you trying to ask me to do? Zoom in or out? So one of the things that you want to think about too is here at the corner of his nose, we're going to be talking about this crease that comes up on big cats. So just make a mark so you know where that is. So these should come up. Now I don't worry about any of these lines. If I did this in pencil, I'd be worried about these lines, but I'm not. Now I, if I see this line I've anchored here across his face, that lets me know easily where I would put my other eye. And because of the angle, it curves down like a little kind of smile, arcs down, and then in into this teardrop. And one thing you can think of when you look at this shape is maybe like a little flag, right? And then this, this has got this round shape inside here that we'll be doing. And then, I don't know if you remember this on big cats, but they have quite a little muscle structure right here. And then, you know, he's got a quite a little muscle structure right there. And that just tells us some things about this. Now, once I know where the eye is from this corner, I can make a line out. And I go, oh, well, that helps me know where my ear goes. A lot of times I try to look at objects on a photograph, not as what they are, but the map. As if they're telling me a direction that I can put things. And then the chest is just going to sort of arc out. And we don't really paint the chest that much. We don't really paint the chest that much, but we're gonna indicate that this is there. If you've done the fox with me, you'll find doing this particularly easy. Well, as much as you know, wildlife painting is particularly easy. Now I'm gonna take the dogs and purple back over to my blue. I'm gonna start over again and get a little white into that mix. And I'm gonna be doing this sort of dark color that I have on the outside. I want it to be even more purple than blue. And I only add the white to give some dimensionality to what's happening in this sort of uh, um, Baroque, dynamically lit kind of piece. 
because that's what we want to do. And also I'm putting all my love into my wishes as I paint over them. They all come true. We've actually had some wishes come true, haven't we, John? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, we end up having uh, quite a few wishes come true. And uh, That's been wonderful to hear. Good things happening to our community is a good thing to hear. I'm kind of pumped to have Angela here. I've gotten to see some of her live events. Has she still gotten to be here? Oh, I, I think so. I just uh, I I was doing a couple of little technical technical things there, so I have to. So you don't know. I don't know. I have to peek back in the channel. So I grabbed some more purple there, and that's how I get that. This is going to be the darkest range, really, mostly. There'll be one shade that goes down from this background, but we want our background to be at least within a shade of what our darkest range is, because this is such a dramatic piece. Now, normally, I might just paint this whole thing blue and then sketch him in with some chalk, just real loose freehand, and just paint him in. But I have found when I do that, that's not as fun for you guys to follow. <laughs> so I've come up with this other way of getting him in so that you might have an easier time getting him in. And of course, the minute we're done with this, I will send this over to Chuck Carson, the animated pencil who will help translate this into, I'm going to come up here to his little forehead, just put a little of this in. And I'm painting all this space around him with this deep, dark, dynamic color. Grab a little white if you need to, just getting some purple. That little streak of white, that can make a big, are you guys noticing how good the color is on both cameras today? John put in about a zillion more lights. So I'm baking, <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally cooking, but you guys have much better color. We, well, four of the new lights were LED. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, just, I think Angela did all the LED in her studio and I'm right now a little envious of that choice. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good choice. <laughs> I thought we were doing pretty good with the fluorescence, but uh, you know, it's like, <laughs> Woo! <laughs> if, you know, if steam starts to come off of me and uh, I start to tan, not that that's ever happened in the history <laughs> of ever, but if I do, you'll know what happened to me. This is real, so much brighter in here than you can imagine. <laughs> like, so, I wouldn't look up for fear of burning my redness. <laughs> So is this a, a a one hoot or a two hoot painting? I would say this is definitely in the two hoot, two and a half hoot painting. Maybe a two and hoot and a grr? Two, maybe two hoot and a grr, but here's what I'll say about all heart party paintings. I keep them in the hoot levels. I think our top hoot is three hoot. We haven't ever gone out of the hoots of paintings where we've <laughs> got into the, ooh. <laughs> we stay in the hoot range. That a, uh, Some of the uh, pro artists and don't understand like when I'll say it's like it's a beginner and this is a beginner, you know, beginner and a beginner intermediate and beginner advanced. There are several stages of being a beginner. Oh yeah. You know, and this is definitely <laughs> In that mid stage of beginning the art journey where you're like, I think I could take that on. But you know, with the traceable, you can do a lot. With the traceable, a lot can happen. Grabbing a little white and a little purple, just making sure there's some drama. Oh, look how much drama that added there. Oh, yeah, get the close up camera on the drama. Drama! The drama camera. The drama camera, also known as the nausea cam. Just getting a little of that tonality back here because I just want some I want to cover my canvas and I just want a little drama little drama little drama I don't want drama in my personal life but I like drama in my art so so Mona was uh, was asking hi Mona you know by by what barometer or, or measurement does a hoot come Okay, so when I started trying to vocalize what I witnessed students going through, and this came from my teaching thing, is how much free talking <laughs> is going on <laughs> during a class. Everybody's laughing and telling jokes, and they're kind of focused, but they're not that stressed. It's a hoot. <laughs> 
if the conversation has slowed down and one of the friends is the other friend, shh, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta concentrate right now. It's a two hoot. <laughs> <laughs> if nobody's talking and nobody wants to share and they're all like drilled down on the painting and they're looking at me, that's a three hoot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're still having fun, but they're 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 hustling, and so that's sort of how I rated the hoot system. So it's a it's like a smidge or a scotch. It's like a smidge or a scotch. These are highly technical terms that I've developed over years of art. And they th- they are imperial and not metric. And so they are imperial and not metric. This is why because I do no metric measurements. <laughs> but but th- this is why Mona's having trouble. Oh, that's that's totally true. Because if it were metric, then we'd be be okay. But you know what? I was educated in San Diego, California, so I'm terrible at metric. You know, things were all measured in surfboards. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) When are you going to be there? Later. Huh? Time is relative. Time is relative. (laughs) Yeah. It's a whole different deal. (laughs) So... My uh, my art instructor in high school, like we had class if he came in from the surf. So there was a. I'm not even exaggerating. That. <laughs> that was a real problem I had. I had to listen to the surf report to figure out what my school schedule was gonna be like. So I'm, yeah, one of the, we had to, we had. To so we've got that kind of laid in there. Yes. We had a good question from Kim. She was Kim. asking, uh, "How do you enlarge some of uh, Chuck's traceables so they're easier to?" Okay, draw? so so the woodworkers kind of really have this down, and um, Steve French just did a Charlie Brown um, <coughs> thing where he did this. But basically, what it is is in the computer, right? You would make it a sixteen by twenty because that's a virtual land. The com- you're just pretending it's a number, and the computer makes it like that. And then you bisect it evenly in half and in half, so you get four sheets, Hmm. right? And then you would cut those four sections out and print each four section and then retape it all back together and then you'd have a 16 by 20. Or you could go down to a place that had large format printing or you could use a projector. Hmm. The projector, yeah, that works. Or you could use an eight by 10 canvas. So it's just... (laughs) It's just whichever way. You, if you're good at puzzles and you can re-put the image back together, you can do the fours or you can... You know what? I'll, I'll, uh, I'll talk to Chuck and see if we can uh, perhaps run our traceables through a process where we can do a four-page printout of them. You know, just... that's not... You know, that would be a good thing to experiment. Experiment all week with this word. Well, that's what Flight Test does. They... they, they uh, they Is it? Pr- yeah, for all of the, uh, the the airplane designs, they pre-cut them into the sheets for people so they can ah. print them out. So we can we can follow their. We're lead. gonna we're gonna copy flight test. We're gonna you know it's, they've if only we could copy flight test and flight test wild wanton I think explosion of awesomeness. I think we're inspired by Mr. Capper's work. Yeah, seriously, I am. That is the coolest, well put together channel. If y'all haven't seen flight test and you think drones are flying or any of that is remotely cool, just stop what you're doing and go watch them. If you yourself or have kids that are interested in flying airplanes, RC stuff, they're we, great. Channel. We've watched the whole rotor DR1. Yep. Because that's what you do. So once I have this in, I'm going to start sort of blocking him in. And the first thing that I'm going to do, and I've talked to you guys about this blocking. Because you guys will be like, how do I paint from a photograph? And I'm always like, print it out black and white, blocking the values. Blocking means that I look to bi- like the big steps of color changes and I make sure I get in the big shadows and the big highlights and I kind of lay it all in like a map. It's like blocked in and mm-hmm. then I know where everything is. And so the first thing that I would do then is maybe like go here. I'm going to add maybe a little burnt sienna to my blue. No, did and this you, is my dark color. Yes, John. Did you pick up some water there? I did pick up a little water. So they were asking how you keep your your uh, canvas so moist there, and I, I, I fast. You're fast. And, and I fast because there's lights in here. This thing is baking on me really quickly. If I was in a regular studio, I'd feel like really relaxed. Like I had a lot of time. Like I had all day. But you're using some kind of palette paper there, yeah. Um, I use a Strathmore acrylic palette paper because it be cheap and easy to get everywhere. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to line this bridge of this nose. 
and I'm gonna pull this down because this is a nice little shadow on him. This is a this is a dark space. The other thing I talk a lot about when you're blocking in from a photograph is that it's gonna take three layers. Even if it's simple, guys, it's gonna take three layers. And that's just how you get the. That's just how you get there, and there's just no shorter way to get there and to get the effect. I'm going to come along here and I'm going to make sure that this is nice and dark right here. Weren't you saying that the, some people were struggling with when they get to about that second layer? Yeah. The panic of my painting be ugly. Everybody's painting is ugly, guys, at the second layer. First layer, second layer, nobody's painting looks good. Mine doesn't look good. You guys are just relaxed and having fun so you don't notice. <laughs> <laughs> And even if you do notice, you're always like too nice to say so because you assume I'm going to work it out, but you don't assume you're going to work it out. I just made sure this was just a slightly different between with the burnt sienna and the white right here. So there was a, a that, like a, a color difference between this and the purple. So it just shows up well. Yeah, pull that camera down just a little bit there. Right there. Yeah, perfect. And then I'm going to put in his nose with just straight purple. Now, could you use uh, like maybe a uh, uh, palette, uh, not palette paper, but um, like parchment paper if you if you had to? You know what I find is that the parchment paper, I mean, sure, you could use a glass plate. You can use, I've seen people successfully wrap cardboard with aluminum foil. Mm, oh, yeah. You know, I've seen people um, get a cut piece of, uh, what is that? Countertops, cor Corian, Corian, or for Micah. Yeah, and and then paint on that, and then just clean it. Oh yeah. Um, there's just a lot of ways to do this stuff. Yeah. So we're gonna come in, and let me come up to his little ear, and I put in a nice dark color at his ear, because we know he's gonna have a nice deep fuzzy ear. I don't know why. We've been to the zoo. We know how these big cats are, but I still think they're cute when they're far, far away, not eating me. <laughs> I still think they're cute when they're far, far away and not eating me. So I'm going to put a nice big dark shadow here because I know I'm going to have one. Because they have all these muscles on this forehead right here. So I'm blocking that in just because I know I've got one. And then I know that under here a little bit, I'm going to have a dark shadow under this brow here. This is called just blocking it in. Just making sure that the things I need, the story I need to be telling is, is sort of laid down where I need to be telling it. Hmm. And come over to the other side. And come over and block a little bit of this in. That's going to be a very dark shadow. And probably underneath here a little bit too. I gotta look at what I got going on here. <laughs> I'm gonna add a little darkness right here. So I'm looking and adding, seeing what I did before. You keep psyching me out. I think you're going over for, for uh, I'm just waiting to get my feathers in the paint is really where I'm at right now. <laughs> so, uh... And now I'm gonna kind of paint in his base, his mid-tone. Well, actually, let me get in some... Just to know where his eyes are, I'm gonna get some of this brown, and it's gonna have a little scotch of this blue in it. And I'm just going to make sure I have that eye sort of laid in. Yes, John, you were saying something. Yeah, uh, I had a, there, was a, there was a really good question. I was to see who asked it. It was, uh, let's see here. Uh, Janelle asked mm -hmm. it, if it's easier or better to paint on an easel or flat on a table. Oh, easel. Straight up, unless you've got an easel on your table. Um, when you're painting on a table, you are intrinsically in this position, which arcs across your back, and you know you're you're painting for hours. So what happens is, is like I, I've noticed this getting back to the periscope because I've got to paint on a table, right? I'm changing up my periscope setup. This is annoying me so much. I'm gonna have face on camera. This is how much it's annoying me. Um, it starts to put your back out. Just bad positioning. Hmm. So if you can avoid doing it, you should. I'm going to get my bigger brush because I want to put him in quickly. Okay. You know, what, what are you using there? I'm going to my one-inch filbert by Creative Mark. We got your backlight cameras on there so you can get close up to the, the zoom-in cameras. Oh, you think so? All right. You want me to go like this? See? Or you want me to go like this? doesn't matter. They both do it. Nope. Down a little bit. Where goes that one? Yeah. Wow. 
Wow, you could read my palm right now. Read my palm, guys. So I'm just adding a little brown to this blue and then some white. I'm going to get it to a mid-range. So if you imagine a gray scale, one being white and ten being black, I want about a five. And I'm knocking back the vibrancy of my blue yep. using the burnt sienna. You may want to pull the. Uh... I'm just going to block him in. What am I? Pulling? There you go, that camera. Yeah. I was just about to say. <laughs> just blocking this in. I'm going to refine all this a lot. But here's the deal, guys. I got to get a base, a layer of paint on here. This is layer one. This is not the layer, other than being fairly sure where my base objects are, that I need to be that stressed about. This painting comes together in the last 15%. That's when it starts to work. That's when it starts to, you know, really pull and You know, and this is, I'm going to have mane and stuff happening all around here, guys. So I am just getting the layer in. Needs this blue. You know, blocking. If I were painting this in a black and white painting, I would be just doing this in shades of gray. Somebody, I think my mom was talking about somebody that had bought like a bunch of shades of gray of paint to do their grayscale paintings and that they had really liked it, which was like crazy to me because I'm like, huh, I can just mix gray. I mean, it's like, that's definitely a color I would be inclined to just mix. You know what I mean, John? Uh huh. <laughs> I was like, 50 shades of them, I can mix all 50 and save some money. Yep. Buy $200 worth of gray paint. <laughs> Not happening. <sighs> Though, it's like that for some artists. I had a professor in college. I'm not going to say her name because I don't want to somehow end up on her radar. <laughs> 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 and she had a master's in art, and so she knew a lot. She's the whole reason why I can stretch a canvas and cut stretcher bars. Because she felt like women in art especially had to be more confident than men. That kind of tells you a lot right there. That was a lot of what we talked about. Is the challenges of women in art. And, um, but she couldn't mix color. That's like six years of art school. Just saying. $100,000. Couldn't mix color. So she had this advice, which is you mixed a color you really like, you should scrape it into a baby food jar. Hmm. Woman could run a machine shop. Wow. Just saying. Really good artist. <laughs> <laughs> Except for that color mixing thing. She would buy 50 shades of tubes of paint. <laughs> it's like, oh good, it's all the grays. Well, you know. <clears throat> you kind of have to wonder though, what's going on in art school that that's just not... Not all of them, obviously. Some of them are very yeah. drilled down into base techniques and mastering things. And some of them are, are very like, no, no, we don't want to limit your creativity. So you just do whatever and we'll figure out how to, how to interpret it. Which is, you know, how you end up sitting there looking at a pot full of dirt. Some girl telling you how it's her grandmother. <laughs> and was like, please don't be your actual grandmother. I mean, I think there's a balance between sharing art skills and techniques and then allowing enough freedom and creativity for people to figure out how to interpret those things. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't have to be all drilled down, you know, gruesome, intense technique to none. That's true. It's just not one or the other. Now, as I'm moving out here, I'm going to start darkening this color up again a little bit. Like what I had in the background. 
because it's going to get darker as it goes down here. So blocking. Just for fun, I'm going to add that there. And I just need this to have some type of, I'm going to get some brown here. Some type of story here. He's going to be fuzzy. Which again is cute if he's not right there. We got to feed the lions at the Vancouver Zoo. Oh yeah. That, thanks to John, that was an experience he arranged for the kids and I. So we got to make their blood bags. Oh yeah. That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> With the kids. My son was little. He was just, just talking. And not, you know, he was still at the carrying him everywhere stage, but just talking. And the, I mean, we were right, we weren't. I mean, there was a fence and they couldn't get through it, but they, we were right there with them in this like narrow alleyway and they're pen and pen and you like shove the little food through the thing. And um, <laughs> one of them, one of the lines came at us and hit the gate and roared and it just, I can't explain to you unless you've, I don't know, been on safari or been close to a lion or heard a real roar up close but it shuts your nervous system down. It flatlines you. It is the most powerful, intense, extraordinary primal experience that you can have. I think, um, I think Underdog, so he's in South Africa. Uh huh. I, I, and I'm making an assumption here because Cape Town is a big metropolitan city, but maybe you took a tour to some preserve close by, you might have had this experience. Or um, if somebody is one of those um, American, I guess, safari hunters where they kill exotic animals, but I can't imagine they'd be painting with our party. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel like we, we pull in a lot of animal just murderers, but if you, if you hear a lion just really close to your roar, it... Wow, I get what happens to the zebra. The Mutual of Omaha stuff I grew up with all just took on a really new feeling. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And then um, there was this long sort of, you know, for the keeper's little runway between the fences. And I mean, the lines couldn't get to you. It was like the fence was like a gazillion feet high and stuff like that. But my daughter, Honey, who was seven at the time was running down between the fences and you know on one side was baboons and the other side was this you know the lions and the lion he just had his blood bag and he was feeling pretty good about everything and then he he like saw my daughter and and you could just see him like kind of perk up like like oh fun like it was just fun and he he did that kitty crouch thing that you see kitties do with a crouch 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 and he got his little hunches going and i'm like and so I've got my baby and I'm like, and I re I know intellectually this thing can't get to my child, but I'm having this like boom, 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 boom <laughs> moment in my chest. And he lets her get really far because he wanted to before. Do you remember this, John? Oh, I do. Before he just chases her down and he runs, 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 runs. And he does this like thing with his paw, like at the fence, like I could have got you. Mm -hmm. And then he just trots off. And it was the most intense. That whole day was like educational in a different way than I expected it to be. Oh, yeah. It was, it was intense. I put a little more white into my mix. And I'm making sure this and this are um, also done. So I don't know if anyone's had that experience or... Oh, yeah. Well, has anyone had that experience? Well, there was actually there's a, there were there were there was uh, some people who came in here afterwards and were asking about the the easel question, ah, and that that uh, if you could touch on that again, I could. Why an easel is better? Why an easel is better? Okay, so even if you're sitting in an easel or even if you're standing in an easel, it allows you to maintain a very relaxed body position, so that you're not putting stress on your spine and shoulders and neck and head. But if you're sitting and you're painting in your lap or you're painting at a table, it will. Now, the question that for artists that have to work flat, like draftsmen, like architects, that's why their tables tilt up. Mm. So that they can be sitting in a very spine supported position, upright. I bet Chuck Carson could weigh in on this one. <laughs> Probably. But, um, and do you remember Bruce Eagle used to paint on the floor and like kill him like he'd be wrecked for two weeks? Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, so the table tilts up to meet them. 
so that they're still in this very upright relaxed position and it's just important when you're painting for your health and well-being if you can do it now I mean you could make a table there's a lot of ways that you can adjust for that but that's what you're looking for is that relaxed positioning and so that's why I'm very pro easel because it really helps you find a better position in what you're doing I'm just going around and making sure that you know my canvas is covered and then I've got that layer of paint on there to work with later scrumbling it in having a blast another one of your uh, technical terms there Scru no, scrumbling is a technical term. You can Google that. One. Really? <laughs> yes, I didn't make that one up. Oh, I thought that was just one of your. Uh, <laughs> you're just making it up. Anybody like you, this? Is Mary Engelbright? Oh my gosh! There were so many people commenting on how much they liked the uh, apron when they first started off. Mary Engelbright, fabric mm -hmm. queen of everything. Props yeah. to Miss Mary, who makes millions of dollars a year in licensing. Go Mary! And where did that one come from? This was made by Sassy Apron on Etsy. She she did that one for me. I was getting the the burlap one that I love so much, and I saw this, and I was like, I've got to have it because it's mm. it's got the chair, it's got yeah. the cherries, and I got a pocket. Now, what about si the, the, now? There's more easel pocket. questions. Okay. What about sitting at an easel versus standing at an easel? Um, you can sit at an easel if you have a good chair, and you, again, it's can you maintain a good healthy body position mm -hmm. um if you're standing at the easel i have a, a rubber mat under my feet so my legs don't get tired oh yeah your anti-fatigue stand yeah and you can kind of see how he's ghosted in can't you yeah he's there and that's him and then if you we wanted to do a thing i'm gonna show you guys where we're going again this mm -hmm. is where we're going we wanted to do a picture in picture because that's been suggested several times where what we're painting is somehow on the screen and we just haven't yet figured out how to get that to be there the way we want it to be there, but we're working on it. Yes. So, um, you know, go to the Pinterest and print it out in color and... Yeah. What would you think about doing this like on a 20 by 20 canvas? You could, you would just um, orient him to the upper left and let the main fly out and have a lot of nice space here. Put the extra space right here. Yeah. Did somebody get a deal on 20 by 20 canvases? <laughs> I think that somebody just wanted to do do a 20 by 20. <laughs> okay. Because that happens sometimes when we get a deal on 20 by 20 canvases. And that's a really nice, uh, it's a really nice feeling. We're going to start putting him in some more. Mm -hmm. Which should be fun. So one of the colors I'm going to play with, we're going to do a lot of turquoise today. So I'm going to get a little cad yellow out. And I'm going to get into my blue and I'm going to make a very deep blue green. I'm going to be going through my blue pretty heavily. Very deep blue green. And I'm going to get a scotch, a smidge, my technical term, of white. And I'm going to come along the space, defining this area by the ear, and pull this up here. We're doing the second layer, guys. He's a simple painting and you should be able to do him, but he is going to be some work. I am constantly shocked when everybody hangs in and does these. And I'm making sure that this part of the brow right here has rounded strokes. Right? To kind of help define that. I'm going to get a little darker blue right here. Pull this in. I'm just trying to recreate what I've already designed. When I painted this, you know, I'm just looking at something and I'm like, I like to take the photographs and print them out black and white and then play with how I can tell that color story. I'm just grabbing the blue, but I've got this turquoise on my brush so it impacts the color that comes out, which is sort of nice. All right. Get back into this turquoise. Pull a little more white and come along here. A little more white. Hopefully, you guys are able to see this. A 
You know, I'm gonna grab even a little more white because again, I'm still blocking and I've got blue on my brush and a little more white. And I'm saying, hey, there's this whole space happening right here above the eye. And I'm gonna start talking about that space around my ear. So a little white and a little blue, a little white and a little blue coming around here. If you need to add water to your brush to improve the flow, go ahead and do that. So that's how sometimes you improve the flow on a heavy bodied paint. And then I'm gonna pull this in Let's see if we can see that on the up close cam. I'm gonna pull this in towards this dark spot on the ear. And this creates a soft line, which will start telling that story of fur, which I need to start telling. And I'll be coming back in with darker and lighter tones, but that's just what's happening right there. So a little bit of the cad yellow and the blue, grab some white. And I'm going to come here underneath this eye. And we'll pull this down. Blocking in this next story. That's all we're doing. Blocking in my next story. I've got to give some beautiful and painterly. John's favorite term. We're going to be painterly. We're going to be kind of loose and expressive with our brush strokes, which is wonderful when we get to do that. I'm going to get back into the yellow and my blue, not rinsing my brush. I'm going to come down underneath this eye and get a little more into this nose shadow that I've got going here. And pull this into the face some. And it's just fun stuff as I'm getting in and telling the story. A little blue and white. You know, you can add a little brown to it if it's like getting too vibrant on you. You want to gray it out. Coming here. And I want to make sure right underneath this nose, I've got a little of this going on. And we're telling his little story right there. Bring it back into where the mane will be. Little brown, little blue, little white. Are we doing okay? It's so quiet. Oh, it's yeah. weird. I feel like I'm just grabbing some purple right now just to be a rebel. Everyone is everyone's commenting how mesmerized they are just by watching the line come in. He just comes in. This is why I like painting live. A lot of artists don't like it. That was, I just put some purple in my brush and um, I just started scrumbling that in and letting that blend out. I know that's a harder thing to do guys, but when you start getting that relaxed, sort of pick up some paint, put it down, what's the value? Hit it here, yeah. Hit it over, you kind of get like, Austin Powers about it, like, yeah, baby, I'm gonna paint that color right over there. It's so relaxing. It is life changing for how much this all starts to become fun. Now, just get some white on your brush, and we're gonna come in and we're gonna, at this upper end of his nose, maybe we're gonna get some of this, some little white. Little, little highlight here saying that this is if you need to grab some water to improve the flow is this on his nose real well you know um, go ahead and improve the flow there's so many songs I wish we had licensed to that so that when I so say these things I, we would like be able to use them yeah it would be so awesome on the show <laughs> like it would be bananas wouldn't it I'm yes. grabbing some just blue and a little white from just that pot where I was mixing over there. And I'm going ahead and adding this little bit to the other side. It's a darker shade. And so it just starts to shape out his nose because we're really just telling the illusion of a big cat because we fur up to a big cat this close. We wouldn't feel that serene about it. I promise you <laughs> back to the zoo story. <laughs> I'll be out of there right now. 
<laughs> I don't think you can get me to do a safari now. Just be in a Jeep near these guys. Uh -uh. I need fence. I mean, I want them to be wild and I want their habitats to be preserved. And I agree not to live there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Of course, that's probably not as possible for whole groups of people who have to. Can you imagine if this was your wild pest? Oh, yeah. I, I got squirrels. That's my problem. Well, and sometimes I have a gator problem. But it's, un I mean, it can, but you don't generally have a gator problem, but I can't imagine living somewhere where this could be in my backyard. Mm. That would be freaking me out to no end. You, John? Oh, yeah. I just, I just could not do it. I'm grabbing some brown and add it to my brush up getting some white. I mean, really, guys. It would just be too much. And I'm adding this highlight around his eye. And I'm going to pop just a little bit of that right here. And we're going to come start working this up here. I think I need a little more blue. I'll probably have to be putting out some more blue. I'm just grabbing what I got there. So, so everyone was asking, do you think you're going to do the green lion? Well, cause, because everyone's asking, yes. I'm going to show how to do the green lion as well. Yeah. If we enjoy them, if, if everyone paints them and they share them with me and I can see that it's you know what I mean? Like it's working and they're getting a lot out of it. Then I'm inclined to include them in the, in the, in the lineup. You have to adjust your close-up camera there a little bit. Okay. I'm going to adjust it. But see, he's starting to look really good now. Oh yeah. He's starting to, you know, and I'm going to move. I want his little dark purple to be moved up. So sort of painted that out and I'm going to scotch it over just a little bit. And these are just little adjustments that you'll, you'll be like, dude, I'm, I'm making these. I'm going to feather it. And I said it, this is why I like the filberts, is they do this soft blend in wet and wet. Which is really all oil painters are ever doing is just they're just blending wet into wet. Mm. You know, it's the ala prima. So you can do it. Yeah, you can do it. You can do an oil painting technique easier than oil painters can come in here and do an oil technique in acrylic. It's a weird it's a weird double A standard that you can have. I'm gonna move this up here into the brow just because I want some of this color up here and a little bit down into the nose because again as I get into it I'm like hmm how can I tell the story I'm gonna get some purple I haven't rinsed out my brush you seen that John oh yeah I do I, I just totally get it wet so you're just getting it wet you're not rinsing it out no because I know that these colors are analogous analogous which means they're close to each other on the color wheel. They're friends. They get along. They don't have conflicting personalities like contrast can. Right? Mm -hmm. So when colors are like that on the color wheel, they can mix beautifully and harmoniously. And when you paint mostly analogously with analogous colors, yep. you end up with a painting that is serene and relaxing and restoring. So I'm going to add, and I'm just kind of feathering. Let me get this down here on his little chinny chin yeah, yeah. chin Pull so that I down can just a bit. show what I'm doing here. I'm going to grab just a little more purple. This is kind of a dark purple, but I'm going to be just starting to tell this little chin story. Now I know the shape of his chin. I know how far my little feathers will go out. I have a fairly sharp, see, when I have, I'm going to go to the thing so I can show it. I, when I have a sharp, good filbert, I can make a fairly small line which is really about how light my brush pressure is. It's as if butterfly wings are dancing along the canvas. This is this is definitely in that wet cat pressure. Zone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a big cat. How gently would you tickle Mr. Lion's chin? I bet super gently. And I'm going to take some of this purple up the nose and Maybe talk a little bit more about this shadow right up there. And that's what you're doing. You're just coming back in and you're like, could I tell a, a, a deeper, more intense story about the shadow? Yes, I could. Could I could I come into this eye socket area here and, and tell a better feathered out story of this and and maybe another better feathered out story of this up here, pulling this up? And could I come here and see when I do this, how does his eye just start to find its space? Oh, yeah. Look at his eye just start to find his space. And then I'm going to very gently come along underneath the eye here with this dark color, making a thin line, just kissing underneath here. So 
So he's like right around Fox difficulty. If you guys remember doing the Fox, this is about where he's at. Now another little place I'd like to run a shadow is there's a temple bone here and I'd like to make sure that I've got it right here. So I'm kind of going to put this in and I'm going to pull up into his ear some more little dark feathers. So it's like I'm feathering it this way and I'm going to keep feathering back and forth with this and that's going to create the layer that will eventually make him feel furry. And you guys said you're up for longer lessons, so <laughs> you're here with me for oh a while. Oh yeah, there's there, we, you know, we definitely have some committed folks with us. You know, uh, I'm oh my gosh, <coughs> what what? So my gosh. Oh no, it just uh, uh, Mona has been uh, has been cheerleading quite a bit in the channel tonight. I, I really appreciate it. I adore Mona, and I think everybody else does too. Uh, definitely one of our community artists I just see her out in the art world just in general being positive though that's like that is she is bringing that out there not just here just everywhere she is like I, I'll see comments somewhere else and it'll be positive and it will be Mona's Mona brings the positivity and I appreciate that I'm gonna kind of shape this eye a little bit and so we've got that there got that there I'm going to get my brown right now because I'm seeing something in the eye I want to correct. So I'm going to get my brown and a little white because I want to be able to see what I'm doing. And I'm going to come here. I want to make sure that the eye has a nice component line to it. And I'll come back in and re-put in my shadow. I just needed to fix that. And you'll do that. You'll see something. You'll be like, how can I fix that line? Just go ahead and adjust it. Just go ahead and work that in. That's what you want to be doing. And I've got to come down here. And his little chest, he needs some more thought and consideration. Ugh, my rag. And I'm going to get, I'm going to put out more blue. Which, right now, phthalo blue is the next thing I've got to run to the art store for. We were talking about that today. I'm not for today's lesson. But I will want to be getting some more color before Saturdays. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For sure. I'm going to add a little green. I mean a little yellow to this to get that kind of green tone. And then I'm going to come in and scotch a little brown. And get a little white. And I'm going to start working this in a little bit. Making sure that this has that I'm gonna feather out here now I'll come in with a detail brush later but I'm gonna make sure let's move this down so we can see this that we're starting to feather out that space too. say furry 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 that's what you're really doing is you're saying furry 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 where do I want to say furry 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 and yes that heart party sound effects are totally allowed because, and I can promise you, after decades and decades and decades of painting, they help. Sound effects help. They totally do. That is something John does here in the studio when I'm painting all the time, is me having internal dialogues with canvases. You know, we have 102 thumbs up already. You guys are amazing to give us 102 thumbs up. Thank you. We didn't even think we were going to stream out. I so appreciate it. You don't even know. I appreciate your time. I appreciate you coming and supporting this dream because you really are supporting our dream you know of sharing art with people it um it makes a difference to us in every way oh yeah so i've gotten into this purple and now i'm moving this back up here and see i can blend this space because these are wet and i've got a filbert and i'm blending and it's just wonderful how that happens because then I just want this second layer because you know what? I'm going to be coming back with this gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous mane. And since I'm going to be coming back with this gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous mane, which is the funnest part of this painting, the eyes and the mane are the funnest part. Eyes and the mane are the funnest part. You know, so I just get that in there. I'm almost going to need John to microwave my coffee for 30 seconds mm. for me. Just making sure I have all that color in there so everything is sort of 
because I know I'm going to have this mane flying out here and I might get a little white on my brush because what I'm seeing is a pretty hard line and I want to soften this. Even though a mane's coming here, these little touches not only are good for you as a growing artist, but will help the overall result of your painting. You know, and every time you do this work, every time you do one of these, you'll see something more, you'll feel something more, something more will click for you. Can I impose on you for this coffee, John? Oh yeah. Brand of coffee, I don't know. I actually don't think they come after anybody on YouTube. I haven't, I've noticed that they've pretty much left the YouTubers alone. That would be like the only people to leave the YouTubers alone. This would be one of those good moments if you felt like fast forwarding me or pausing or being just like, I don't want to hear this, but you could do that. I never take that personally. We have that feature in the live events. John isn't there to catch any comments. So if we're missing something hypercritical, like there's a meteor coming to earth, see? But I have intentional creation, so I would be happy all the way down. I actually do think that um, open-minded thinking, non-limited thinking, um, just makes it easier to get through just the day-to-day. -day. I don't really even care why it makes it easier. I just feel like it makes it easier from the day-to-day. -day. I stopped watching the news over it. So I would definitely not know if something was coming because I wouldn't be watching the news because the news just wants to make me miserable and I don't want to join them in that. No. I just want to make me angry. We just had this, this big thing in Houston, right? And, and I don't, you remember this? They're like, they're reporting, I don't know, some proposition. They've always got some proposition. But like the news was like with these graphics and the noise and you couldn't get away from it. It's like, men are coming to the bathroom. <laughs> I'm like, when, where, what bathroom, what's happening? And I'm, I don't even care. Right? Like this doesn't, I don't even care about this issue at all. And it's like with graphics and sound effects and there's explosions. I swear I saw one with men coming to the bathroom and the bathroom exploded. Because you know that's what happens when men walk into a women's restroom is it explodes instantly. Like Tokyo. Do you know what I'm saying, John? Like an anime? Uh-huh, like an anime. I don't trust the reporters. I feel like they're just trying to upset me. I don't feel like they're trying to inform me. Or give me information so I can make up my own mind. I feel like they're trying to upset me and then tell me what to think about whatever it is I'm upset about. <laughs> it's funny. You know what I mean? I do. You do. Because you're here with me every day and you know. I'm going to pull out a little purple. I'm going to add a little blue to the mix. And I'm going to get some white. Robin's still out there working on her pig butt. <laughs> awesome. Well, a lot of people are talking about the what, the, what they're working on right now right now not the lion <laughs> well you know they got other paintings in progress right well you should i have other paintings in progress right now so i'm coming right here with this sort of soft periwinkle and i'm blending it in can we see this on the let me move my up close cam now i'm just adding this little this nice little story right here and maybe a little bit right here telling the story. This is very soft pressure. That's a lot of how I do these paintings is I work very, very softly. And I'm coming along the upper end of the nose here. And then I'm brushing the stroke up, brushing the stroke up. Come here and I'm getting a little more white. Brushing the stroke up. And then I want to come get a little darker. I've got a little highlight there. Get back into my purple. I'm going to come here and I'm going to just brush. Again, one, I'm letting the paint underneath really start to shine through. Brushing this back. Because I'll be coming back with a darkness there. The darkness. The darkness. The darkness right there that I'm going to be exploiting. And I'm going to add some of this. Now that's awfully nice. So Robin said that she was donating uh, all all of her animal paintings to the Humane Society. What a good idea! Is that uh, is that why it's mom? Uh, uh, Robin, watch a flint. Yeah, hi Wyatt. You guys don't know this, but one of our hardest is a national champion Irish dancer. 
dance, like oh. river dance. Like the future of river dance is this gorgeous, awesome, amazing little boy who's so creative and so talent, has the most incredible shock of hair I've ever seen in my life. I just love everything about him. And his mom is um, an advocate for health and awareness for Lyme disease, and also is an advocate for animal well-being. And she has quite some really beautiful heart projects going on in the world right now. Just trying to make the world a better place. She's like what I like to refer to as one of the additive people. She makes the world better more than it was when she woke up instead of less than it was when she woke up. Yeah, apparently she's on the board of directors of the Humane Society. Is she? Yeah. So I've got this periwinkle. Well, then the Humane Society is in very, very good hands. Good stuff. And I'm adding this right here on this ear. I'm going to come along here, right here, adding this right here, just this ear along this little edge here. Just kind of telling a story. And get a little white, maybe get into the blue over here just a little bit. And this is what I'm, I'm still going through, telling this story more and more and more and more. Right? I'm going to add a little highlight up here. Do you see that? Am I up here where we can see that? Oh, yeah. Getting a little highlight up, up here. Oh, you know who we forgot to shout out to? It was Faith. And I hope Faith catches this lesson. Faith has been with Heart Party since, oh, I think like literally lesson one. Oh, yeah. It's, impo it's possible she's been here since, since the littlest hoot. And she had heard my crack up about, you know, you couldn't have the $6 million man anymore because he'd be like a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. And she found some press release that they're making it, and he is going to be... The $6 billion. The $6 billion man. That's I'm great. putting a little yellow on my brush and taking it over to the blue and hitting it with the white real hard. I'm going to come here. I'm going to add this right, right here above the eye. Come underneath here just a little bit. You have to adjust your camera there just a little bit. Just just a touch. There. Just starting to talk a little bit about what <laughs> I've got going on here. Yeah. Wet cat pressure jokes abound. Yeah, well they need to, man. It's a whole thing. Just adding some of this. And Mega and Lisa from Seattle wanted to send love and sippy sippy. Oh, thank you. Megan and Lisa! Caffeinated up now! So I'm coming under this eye. I'm going to add a little more white to what I got on my brush. I just want it to pop a little more. And we're just building this up, up, up. Up, up, up. And that's really what I'm just trying to do here is build these things up. You know, and a uh, little very yellow and green. Get some white. Some white. And maybe like right here on his nose, I'm going to add a little bit. And a little bit here. Maybe there's a little bit right here. And a little. This is what it is about the color is you just got this. You just build up. See how we're just building up, John? Just layer after layer. Layer after layer. It's three layers. There's just nothing to do but do that. That's what you got to do. Put some up here because I want some right there. Now his ear needs a little bit of thought. So I've got into the white here and it's fairly fluid. I'm going to come along just the outside of this ear just a little bit. And just some of these light hairs on the inside. Some of these light hairs on the inside. Rinse out your brush. Now we'll have a lot of work left on the nose and the eyes. And we've still got a little more on the, on the chin. And then, believe it or not, the mane is really quite a... I'm getting some just purple and I'm adding some blue to it so it's quite dark. And I'm coming and I'm making sure I've got this reinforced again important for later this furriness so there's the a in. question i know you'll enjoy 
I will enjoy it. All right. I've got some just purple here. What do you think about using Mod Podge as a clear coat? I think that Mod Podge is uh, adhesive and it yellows really quickly yeah. over time. So probably I think not. Mod Podge is a fabulous company. But not, not a good varnish? Not a good varnish. You can um, actually get some recipes for homemade varnish. Um, there's some good ones out there. There's some scary ones out there that'll ruin your painting. And doesn't it, doesn't Mod Podge attract dust as well? Well, see, what it is, is that, um, no, Mod Podge is, Mod Podge is designed for decoupage and crafting processes. And they have 20 something kinds of Mod Podge. Like the Mod Podge company isn't playing. And if they made one that was a varnish, I would say, yeah, probably that's a good one because they definitely do their research. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But just regular Mod Podge that you would just grab that's their base Mod Podge isn't for that and will yellow over time. Interesting. You know, um, but I have total respect for the company. Because they, 20 kinds of Mod Podge, they're not kidding. You know, whatever your Mod Podge needs might be for, they're willing to totally help you there. It's just... Mod Podge does certain things and Mod Podge does not do other certain things. And that's just, you know, something that we've all got to, uh, to accept and, <laughs> and address. Yeah. <laughs> that's all it is. The limits of Mod Podge are fine. So I've got some more of this yellow and what this sort of like yellow and white and everything that I made over here. And I'm going to come down to my chin, chin, and I'm going to just add some of these hairs here coming out. Just a little bit off of his little fuzzy, fuzzy chin. You could come back with blue. You couldn't really overdo this, guys. It just would be fine. And I'm going to get some blue into my brush and some yellow and get some really wonderful turquoise going. Hit with white. And I'm going to make sure that I've got this story right here a little bit happening at his chest. Because when I tell when I get the mane going in there, I'm gonna need it. Get a little more white on my brush, and just check for the last place I could possibly use it, which is, you know, we're going to add some little three little scruffs here. Little scruffs. Scruffs. And we'll make sure that he's scruffed enough here. And he's scruffed anywhere he needs to be scruffed. I just gotta check his scruff. So I still have a bunch of eye work to do and main work to do. But I'm gonna do the eye work after I do the main work. Gotcha. And I might switch to a bright. I'm gonna kind of look at both, but I'm thinking I'm gonna switch to a bright to get my main work. And then if it isn't working, I'll get to my better filbert. And I think I've got a little more detail to do in the nose when I'm doing the eyes. Got some shine and stuff to do in the nose, but I'm going to hit all that when I'm hitting the eyes. And the reason is, is because I, I pop this with cat orange when it's all done and I'm, I need to get it. There's an order. So put out some more dogs in purple if you need it. I certainly do. And this dogs in purple is going to be cad red and dogs in purple and it's base. Um, a lot of, I just read from somebody who was excited to find out that they could do, it was actually Pandora, that they could do um, Dogs Named Purple and Cad Red. And they actually do make a really lovely mix. So I'm making sure this is fluid enough. The mane needs to be fluid. Okay. Needs to be. So the first thing that I'm going to start to do is I'm going to start telling the story of the mane I'm painting on the edge of my brush. And this is all about hair. And hair, people try to draw hair, but what they're really drawing is shadows and oh. highlights. And how those shadows and highlights relate to each other, much like branches, is a lot of how hair is told. More than individuals. So I like to start putting in my shadows first. Now, I'll keep going through and adding and taking and moving, but it just starts 
when I start putting this in, this tells me some directionality information that I need to have. It's informing the directionality of the main. And that's what I'm trying, 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 trying to do. And you will definitely, to get a nice fluid result, either need to purchase golden fluids or add water to your brush. I'm not sure how we managed to, but there is a hockey uh, sort of meme going around. In a the hockey chat. meme? Yeah. <laughs> it, well, cause it, is it Movember? Is that what it is? I'm not sure. Because we lived in Canada, so we know about that. So we're going to add this. This is going to be... We're starting to tell the story around the ear. Coming there, layering this back up. See, this is why you can't do this with oils, which is the way that I can layer darks and lights over each other is not really possible. So the breakfast club is having a pretty good time out here. Are they? They're all, they're all, uh, I'm enjoying. so glad that they enjoy each other's company. Oh yeah. It's, it's actually pretty wonderful that they are having as much fun as they do and might for the purposes of me getting through this in a timely fashion, move to a bigger brush. Well, it's really nice cause it's, you know, it gives me someone to, to chat with and know who, you know, what's going on out here now. Did you add some water there? I added some water and some white. Ah. And I up the size of my brush because I've got to, I have a different speed concern than everybody else. And I've got to start getting in this story. Fairly effectively. So I just want to get this, this sort of base in here. And I'll go back to my one inch. I just wanted to get this mid purple flowing. And so sometimes I'll do that. I'll move to a bigger brush to move through the process quicker. Mm -hmm. That's all that's happening. Because I need to move my process along. And then we come back and address. other people's processes, but I pretty much kind of know my deal. So I create this flow, this line, this directionality with the main, and it is in the tonalities that I start to tell the stories of these wild hairs. I keep the brush pressure light so that the hairs have tendrils. You know, I can get a little blue on my brush and get a little white on my brush. Come in and start telling the different stories of this hair here. Pulling it in. So tell me what's going on in our world, John. Oh, wow. Well, there's a uh Colleen is just a, uh, she's a, uh, was just talking about her dogs were parking in the background. So there <laughs> were, uh, there was a bunch of jokes about little puppies yipping. And, uh, I was uh, chuckling following along the breakfast club as they were talking about that. So, uh, but, uh, it's, uh, 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 let's, where did it go? I have to scroll back up. Sorry. It's hard to, to manage no, okay. reading both the comments and switching back and forth. Well, I'm going to just be picking up more white here and there is what I'm going to be doing. Making sure I have fluidity on my white. Making sure that this is... Yeah, everyone's uh, very interested in seeing the green lion too. Yeah, I think if we tell the story of both the green lion and the blue lion, we will hit really have visited, but then we haven't told the story of a realistic lion either, so I'm sure there's going to be a some point visita visitation of a realistic lion. I just am so glad that with our current 
um, schedule we're able to get through stuff as expeditiously as we are. Oh yeah. So now I've got this one inch brush and I'm going to come up here into what's happening in my ear and I'm going to add just this close -up camera there a little bit. purple that I've got. You can kind of see how the tonalities of the main were coming in and I'm adding this purple. They're saying they really like the, the cute little elephants that you did. Ah, uh, the kawaii elephant. I'm so glad that the kawaii is resonating as well as it is with everybody because I really wanted to do it. The cute little elephant. So it makes me very happy that it is as well received as he is. So I've got this sort of little tufts happening here. And then I'm going to come and maybe get a little of this and get in there and... A little white and a little red. And I'm sure it'll need a little more thought. It's going to take a couple layers. Again, it's like a uh, regular painting. It takes a couple layers of thought. A couple layers? But it's, it's looking just, it's looking really cool. Now now he is. Now he's starting to have some of this some of this little thought. I'm going to add a little furry fur to his chin chin chin. Because I like this color. Never be afraid to do that. If you get a color that you like, you're like, oh, I like that color. Add it somewhere. You know? <laughs> Go ahead and add it somewhere. Be like, I like it. I'm adding it. This deal. So I'm going to come and get a little of my red. Take it over to my dog's name, purple. Get a little blue of that. Get this deep, deep color. And I'm going to come up behind this ear. Outline it with this dark. And then here's an interesting thing. So his mane is blowing just a little bit behind his ear across his forehead. So I'm making sure that I've got that story happening there. And then it's blowing up. The wind currents, the way that they're catching him, and this reminds me of when I would be out on the trail with the horses, the way wind could hit their mane. It would be traveling in upward directions and then not just in one way. If we were ever, ever to indulge my love of Southwest art, mm -hmm. right? If we were ever to say, get into our Cowboys and our Kent Wallace and our R.C. Gorman, we would definitely get to talk about, you know, that cold, wet, mm. cold, wet horse wind. And the cowboy. I don't know if anyone's into that. Yeah. Because well, that's, couple, that's were, my art DNA. <coughs> so there were a couple of questions. Okay, I have so many answers. So can you paint, let me make sure I got the right uh, the right order because this is question. This, this question, in this question, it could be important. Okay. Uh, where did it go? All right, I'm pulling Patricia the hair. Patricia asks if... Pulling uh, the hair. Acrylic paints can be used on the same paint on the same painting as oils. Like after one dries, then use the other. Okay, so here's what the deal is: you can paint oil over acrylic very easily. That's called uh, lean over fat, but not fat over lean, which is um, uh, you can paint oils over acrylics, but not acrylics over oils. So not lean over fat, fat over lean. You can paint fat over lean, not lean over fat. However, if you have a crazy old completely cured oil painting that you know is dry and you paint some acrylics over it, it's gonna it, it's gonna be fine for your lifetime it may not be the most archival thing but that that movement where people take discovered oil paintings and they embellish them and stuff like that a lot of times that works because the oil painting is cured if the oil painting is not cured and you paint acrylics over it you have just messed up your oil painting but you can paint oils over acrylics and many of the best artists on the planet do um, uh, Lockery fine art. A lot of her technique is based on a mixture of oil. Interesting. And acrylics. That's how she gets that high level of realism. So Crystal had just uh, said thank you very much for the uh, sharing her cat bat and for the wishes. I just, Crystal, admire you so much. And I, ho I hope you went and checked out that painting, the other one that my friend Angela did with the Q-tips, because that is, I think, one of the most brilliant projects on YouTube. 
I think it's just genius. Only to be topped by her credit card tree project. <laughs> it just she just trips me out because I never look at my studio and go, what if I did this with no brushes? <laughs> So I just sometimes try to imagine Angela sitting there and go, what, what if I had no brushes? You know, I think it's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Everyone thinks this looks really beautiful. And I imagine we've lost Angela her day because all of the artists, you know, if we're on YouTube, we got to work. Oh, yeah. So. There's still lots of folks that are hanging out, watching. And How just are we doing? Like, do we still have, like, a like people? Oh, yeah. It's, uh, this is, we've, you know, over 100 likes there in just the, in, the, in the first few minutes, in, in the first half hour of the show, so. Wow. Wow. So I'm just blowing this hair. I'm just blowing his mane. And I start with this dark color. I start with the dark color. And I pay attention to my dr brush directionality using a bright. Just blowing it over. See how, yeah, I think I came down to brushes are in my way. I gotta check to see. <laughs> <laughs> when I first told the story, what was I saying? And so I just gotta make sure I'm kind of telling the same story when I do the lessons yeah. with you guys. You have to grab that, uh, grab the camera there a little lower there on the front. There Getting you in go. his little mane, telling the story. And that's all we're doing. And we're telling this dark yeah. because, again, hair is in shadow, things are in shadow. One of the big things about making something look and feel like it is what it is is just catching the values catching the dar the the darks the lights the that part of that story not just you know individually hairs or something like that now i'm going to get some white get it into my mixture i think i want to make sure i've got some enough red in it and i'm going to start I think up in the corner, refining the story. And that is a lot of fun for me, is refining the story. So I'm pulling up here and just looking for places to tell this story. How does the story start to come together? How can I start telling it? And I honestly don't generally tell the main story the same way every time I yeah. tell one. You kind of let it flow out differently. Can what? You just let it flow out a little differently. Just if it does, it does, man. I'm not like, again, I don't specialize in forgery. <laughs> <laughs> so duplicating every single brush stroke isn't really my goal. My goal is to capture the overall essence or intention of the piece. And so that's what I'm always looking to do. So they were, they were at, you had an awfully purple hat on today. I do. This is my House of Draw hat, which John verified wasn't blocking the, uh, wasn't blocking. It's my Renaissance Festival hat oh. that my mother-in-law got me because she collects House of Draw hats. She's like 10. And because she has so many, we've all benefited. And it's one of my favorite, favorite things. And she doesn't make them anymore, which makes me so sad. Though they threatened that for years. She was going to stop making them, and then she kept making them, and then she stopped. Because they're very difficult to make, because she somehow, she says she gets these from her chickens without killing them, so <laughs> I don't know if that's she true. But I can't imagine trying to collect this many feathers without harming the chicken. I want to see that purple chicken. Yeah, I want to see the purple chicken. <laughs> I want to own that purple chicken. That's all I want in life is a purple chicken. <laughs> so we, we had judgmental chicken the other day. We did have a very, I have loved everybody's judgmental chickens, everybody's classic Fords. Though, uh, thanks to one of our viewers, we probably have a, a, a one in winter coming up that's a, she a Chevy. Oh, yeah. You're, oh, cool. Grab your close-up camera there. 
Okay, so we probably will have a Chevy in our car series coming up. Or, you know, just because people cared enough to send me pictures of abandoned Chevys for John. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. <laughs> just because he's so abused. That's what's happening here is he's so abused. So ridiculous. All right, rinse out your brush. I'm going to, next color I'm going to start getting into is I'm going to start getting into my blue and white. Blue and white. I'm going to come in, I'm going to start adding to the story. Let's make sure I'm here. Yeah, I'm going to start adding to the story with my blue and white. There, there's, there's a lot of, of roars happening out there. A lot of what? Roars. Oh, everybody's roaring? Well, it started out with Mona. She said, I am woman, hear me roar. And then there were lots of echoing roars and then some meows and then some kitty. And then <laughs> just, it's just a menagerie of cat sounds erupted within the channel. <laughs> <laughs> just cats in general being celebrated today on Heart Party. I'm so glad we have these live shows. And I always like to, to people who come and paint these after, you know, I... If you ever can make the live show, we're always happy to have you, and we're so grateful when people come and post. But if you can make a live show, definitely make a live show because I cannot at all convey the energy, the positivity, the heart, the loving, and the kindness that is the Heart Party community. We are so blessed. Yes, thank you guys so much for showing and hanging out with us. We really appreciate it. I'm just coming and telling some highlighting stories. And see his mane just starts to be. Just just comes right in. It does. It just starts to be its own thing. And then I feel like there's just a little story here we still need to tell. Right there. Maybe a little bit there. And we'll come and start telling the story down here just a little bit. A little bit of main story down here. Because, you know, sometimes you need to. And it's fun. It's just simply fun. So there were some questions. Do you think you would, you would do a big canvas with those big brushes? Everyone wants to see you paint with the big brushes. Yeah, I could do a big canvas. There's you know, a big, they like the big brushes. Well, I mean, the big brushes are fun. <laughs> We could do a big canvas at some point. So I've kind of got that in. Looking great. It's looking wonderful. And guess what we get to do now? What's that? The eyes. Ooh. So the eyes need to start to come together. And we're going to zoom in on those. So that's really quite a thing when we start putting in eyes. And I'm going to get a smaller brush. I'm going to get my smallest filberts. Is what I like to work my eyes in. So I'm going to get a very small filbert or square. Whatever mm -hmm. I can ferret out. That's a good size. Like quarter inch or smaller is what I prefer. Ha 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 ha. I think I found one. Alright, so I'm going to do it with this size. This is a quarter inch filbert. You could do it with a quarter inch square. And I'm going to... Add just a little blue to my brown. Maybe even a little purple. I'm going to start working his eye. Which is shading. I like to shade the eyes. I don't really paint eyes as much as I shade orbs. It's really what I'm doing. You know how those big eyes, those big hyper-realistic jo eyes, John, mm -hmm. on YouTube are super popular? Like, it's like, how to paint a realist? We should do, like, a giant big eye. <laughs> <laughs> just, like... Using your giant like, brushes, we're going to do a giant eye. We're going to just do this giant eye. I'm going to pull some just burnt sienna out. I'm going to come on the underside here with this burnt sienna. Just blending that in. Get back into my shadow. Make sure my shadow is right under the lid here. Because the lid will always cast a shadow. You can get some yellow. 
and you can come just this outer corner. And I may want to put some brown into that yellow because I don't like it just yellow. I like you can get some brown into that. And I'm going to just add a little, just a little bit, the kiss of a of a glow at the eye. And stuff. So you're just you're adding in the, the just building it in. That's what I'm doing. Rinse that out. And I'm going to get some Mona keeps purple. asking what color are they going to be. <laughs> what color are what going to be? The, the lion's eyes. <laughs> <laughs> what, what color are you going to make them? <laughs> so I'm going to come around here. I'm going to darken this. Darken this here. Just along this inside. And come under his lid. Darken this as well. A little bit here. I'm sure this is really nice right here. Sort of start defining out the space here. And then I want to get some of my turquoise. And a little white. I want to start just adding some hops of highlight. there. So pops is some highlights right there. Kind of had it here. I just wanted to find a little more right here. And then here's an interesting thing I'm going to do. I'm going to very lightly pull just lightly some lashes down in this green. This turquoise green. Just a little bit. really all it takes and then grab some white just a titch just a small amount of just pure white on the tip of your brush a little dot on the inside eye Come here there you go Wow. This little eyes is coming together. We're going to come back with some orange to pop it, but that's just what we're doing right now. Come over to the far eye, and we're making the dark color. A dark, dark, dark color. And so you got to just remember that this is like a marble in the socket, and so you're just trying to shade things like it's a marble in the socket. That's all you're doing. And it's a, almost exactly like a marble in that it's uh, round and see-through. I'm going to add some of this brown over here because I didn't get enough of just the burnt sienna. And I feel like his eye needs some burnt sienna in there. You're just adding this. And make sure you get the dark. It's the shadow of the eye that makes an eye feel like an eye. So you've got to just keep working that to make sure that the lid is casting shadows. All right, now you can get some yellow into your brown. Show like just a little bit of that highlight if you need it. I'm going to get my purple and sort of define that lid a little bit more. Come under here and make sure that's defined a little bit more. Every once in a while I have to pay attention because I get mesmerized by watching you paint and just sort of, you know, go into autopilot of switching just because I like watching too. <laughs> well, I take that as a compliment. Thank you, babe. I'm going to pull some lashes out this direction too. See those little lashes are there. Maybe add a little bit of this. Just a little bit coming up this corner. You know, because that's what we're trying to do. I might bring some of this green that I have around the inside of my nose. Just to pull it through, just to tie it all in. Hit to adjust it close up camera there. So you guys can see that. Oh, there it goes. Let me see. And he still needs a reflection in his far eye. Can add that in there real quick. 
reflection in his far eye. Dot. Grab some brown because I feel like there needs to be balance. Brown just dabbed in there. Just trying to work that balance between those eyes. That's how I get those balance between those eyes. Mm. Now, the eat only black. I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little brown over to my black. I don't want it to be pure black because that will pull crazy in the painting. But I want just a slightly darker value than I've been able to mix anywhere else. Just under these lashes, I'm going to add. Can you see that real close in that close up camera? Oh, yeah. You can zoom in even closer, though. Yeah. You have ultra zoom. By the way, there you go. Keep going. Keep going. There you go. go you back. can kind of see that little value. It's not much. See, here's the thing. Here, center that up. Less is more, and it's not much. All I'm doing is kissing this right here, but it makes a difference here, later. Yeah, touch it. Yeah, make sure you get that centered really well. So that's just sometimes what I like to do. It's a little touch I got on my eyes and just make sure that that's there and then your brain will finish out that pupil. Now I am going to cheat and add a little water <laughs> down directly on my CAD because I need it to be very fluid and it's been out under the hot lights, you probably will be putting out your CAD in more reasonable amounts. And you're going to get just your pure CAD on a detail brush. I have a nice detail brush right here that I have a nice fluid CAD loaded to. Right? And so I'll finish out the eyes because we're zoomed in. We're zoomed in on the far eye. Come to this eye. Does the CAD matter? Yeah, it does actually. This is this is the kind of stuff that you know takes it to that next level. And that's woo, how we there, start to pull there we go. him together. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to tell a little story there. Yeah, a little bit there. Let's come in on the inside of the nose. It's amazing how this orange line just changes everything. And it does just change everything on the painting. And because of color, the way CAD is, and this is why I bother to use CAD or work with CAD or anything, because it visually impacts us this very special way. You can add a little yellow to it to give it some value change. But you're still going to get that pop. You're still going to get that big, big, big response. As you pull these little hairs, you might be like, oh, I need to give him some chinny chin chins. And it does refine and define the world that you're building. Add a little white there. Can I do that? Yes, I can. Now we're popping contrasts to increase dynamic tensions within the painting. We are refining lines and Improving a story. Maybe I just go dot 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 in the air. 
This is if there is a high shine. What this says to your brain is that this is a healthy, shiny animal. It puts some energy into what's happening. So even though he's very peaceful, even though he's very relaxed, even though this is very, very mellow, this color pop, this surprise, this color surprise, which, you know, I'm sure you've heard from my mom, if you watched her, this creates the drama and the peace. This makes it... Everyone loves the colors. Yeah, this makes it the story that it is. You guys know we're almost, I can't believe we actually wow. got through this. I thought we'd be here for like three hours too. So, if we were able to be here at all due to the... Uh, the intertubes going up and down. The intertubes. So there you guys go. Wow. Right? There you guys go. How do you feel about that? Tell your story. All right, I feel like Leo here, I feel like he's awesome. Yeah. I feel like he's, uh, I'm gonna listen at my canvas here. My child's coloring page is coming down. <laughs> he likes me. This is Baby from Supernatural, if anybody was wondering. He likes to have me to see his art while I'm painting. If you guys have seen Spider and Pirate, Spider Periscope, he has some real opinions. Wow. That so looks hopefully so this nice. is what you got or some version of this. Remember yours isn't supposed to look like mine. Yours is supposed to look like yours. You're in different places on your art journey. There isn't a pass or fail grading system in art. You're just working on skills. Mm -hmm. This is just a set of skills. And it, you know, it's okay if it takes you twice to get the skills or three times. That's not really the important part. The really important part is the relaxing, centered, whole feeling you get while you're painting. And you're oh painting yeah. with colors and, and ideas and thoughts and stories that make your soul happy. And you can keep, you know, fiddling, fiddling, fiddling. You can put another hour into this, just creating more drama and more tonality. Oh, yeah. You know, we just keep these sort of abbreviated for the purposes that people got to go home and eat food and eat lunch. Oh, yeah. Including me. <laughs> So hopefully you liked it. Yeah. And thank you for for hanging out with us today and painting. Please comment, like, share. Share this with your friends and family. We love to see everybody's new paintings. So please share this with your friends. Post up those new paintings and tell Facebook, us your stories. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We want to hear the stories of you painting with these paintings. Periscope, see me design. You can see me working out stuff like elephants going, am I going to do this watercolor? No, I'm not going to do this watercolor. You know, you'll see me working stuff out. Yeah, we love that you paint along with us. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I'm going to see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye.